The Enlightenment had such an impact on the upper levels of society in France that it began to spread into other areas of Europe as well. This is a remarkable thing because it was literally illegal to criticize the church and the government. But as we've been reading, that's exactly what these thinkers were doing. Many of them were exiled or kicked out of their country. Voltaire, a French philosopher, for example, was the John Stuart of his time. He was jailed twice before being exiled to England. He was an advocate or supporter of tolerance, reason, religious freedom, and the freedom of speech. Despite the opposition from the most powerful institutions on the continent at the time, ideas spread through books, magazines, and word of mouth at coffee shops and French salons. And it helped to spread those ideas to other uh, wealthy, rich Europeans. Salons were one of the keys to the spread of the Enlightenment. But salons were special gatherings in the living rooms of wealthy women in Paris. This was an important role for women, by the way. It carries out the uh, courtier's tradition for the court lady. Philosophers and thinkers, writers, authors, scientists, wannabes, everybody came to these events. Imagine being in the living room of one of these wealthy women with Voltaire, Montesquieu, and Rousseau. Maybe even Thomas Jefferson and Immanuel Kant when they were visiting France. Discussing their latest ideas in philosophy, mathematics, or economic policy. Now these might not be normal topics for your average 21st century American teenager gathering. I would assume that pop stars, TV shows, and high school drama would take a higher precedent than, uh, you know, the nature of philosophy and existence and such. Um, but probably for most Europeans at the time, those mundane day-to-day -day things would be of a far greater importance and relevance than the heady ideas of these few privileged people. The coffee shop was another place that people would get together and talk about new ideas. These were less formal gatherings than a salon, but in some ways more democratic, because anyone could wander into a coffee shop, uh, given that they had a little extra money that they would need in order to purchase drinks of coffee. Coffee shops to this day still have this aura of intellectualism about them. Just picture a bunch of hipsters sitting around discussing the newest trend in modern bluegrass fiddlers releasing a compilation of 1922 southeastern Kentucky bluegrass folk ballads on vinyl. As we mentioned in the Rousseau video, he did a little work writing articles for Dennis Diderot's encyclopedia. This work was first published in 1751. It was a collection of writings on a broad range of topics from various intellectuals in the Enlightenment. As you can expect, though, the ideas expressed in the encyclopedia angered the church and they banned it. But imagine for the first time having knowledge like this at your disposal. It was like Wikipedia, but instead of just letting anyone write, Diderot collected the top scholars of his time. Today we're spoiled. We have an infinite supply of information at our fingertips. Our challenge today is filtering out the nonsense from the sense. But in the Enlightenment, these guys weren't messing around. They spoke um, a multitude of languages, studied at the best universities, and came from very wealthy families. The unfortunate side of the Enlightenment was that it was reserved to those people, and a large part of Europeans were not in a situation to sit around thinking, as they were too busy farming 